to welcome back to my channel and welcome to the next in the series called A Closer Book. This is a series where I talk about three of the books that I read recently. Today I'm going to talk about three novels that I enjoyed, even though they're not the kinds of books that I usually read. In fact, the book that was the most different from my usual wheelhouse is the one that I enjoyed the most. And I have a copy of one of these books to give away today. So stay tuned for the next video in A Closer Book, as well as details on the giveaway coming up. In my Closer Book series this year, I'm going to be recapping the books that I've read three at a time. That's just because at the end of the month, sometimes I've read so much that it's very difficult to remember all the details that I wanted to share with you about each of the books that I read. And that's not including the Man Booker winners that I'm reading for my Man Booker Reading Challenge. Those I'm going to be reviewing individually. But I started the year with recapping three arcs that I got from NetGalley, and today we're here for three novels. This is book four, five, and six of my January reading. First up is the debut novel of Hank Green, brother of John Green of YA writing fame. And the two brothers have a YouTube channel called Vlog Brothers, which I occasionally watch because they appeal to my nerdy side in the way they talk about science and related to pop culture. And I find that fascinating. So of course I wanted to check out Hank Green's novel and true to my usual form where I don't usually read too much about book synopses, I did absolutely no research on this book. So I had no idea what it was about. And I was a little surprised but pleasantly. So I'm not gonna rob you of the opportunity to get the same kind of organic experience of this book. So I'm not gonna tell you too much about it, except to say that the book is set in New York City. It follows a very young protagonist. She's 23 years old, her name is April May, and she's living in New York City. She's a recent college graduate with her graphic design degree. And she's pretty much living the New York life in that she actually has a job where she's using her skills. She's working for a startup company and she's working as an app designer so she's using her skills and she has a job which does not include serving fast food so yay for april may and one night coming home from work coming home from her absolutely unremarkable job she sees something that piques her interest and she calls a friend to share it and together they make a video which they put on youtube and the video goes viral and launches april may into instant internet fame so the novel is speculative fiction on the laws of the universe and how they work, relationships between how matter interacts, as well as relationships between people. And so in this book, we find some things that are science, that are science fiction, but also the way that this young woman, through one video, through one video going viral, becomes a media superstar is also a little bit speculative because I've been making videos for a few years and I haven't gone viral yet. If you're a YouTube creator or if you know a lot of YouTube creators, you know that most people do not achieve instant stardom from one video, but we're gonna go with the story. But there was a lot that I enjoyed about the book. I like the way the author incorporated pop culture and science as well as gave a puzzle. So there's a little bit of a gaming experience in this book. And if you're a gamer, which I'm not, you'll find a lot of things in this book to enjoy. But even if you're not a gamer, if you're just interested in how things work, which I guess is what the Vlog Brothers try to do on their channel, if you're just basically interested in how things work, relationships, YouTube, media, life <laughs> it reminded me a lot of the pokemon go craze a couple of years ago with a lot of the things that happened in this book even though pokemon go is not mentioned here and the fact that i like puzzles and there might be a lot of you who like puzzles there's a lot to enjoy in this book so i don't know if i'm going to be able to give it justice without going too much into the story and i definitely don't want to do that i don't want to say too much except to say that i really enjoyed this book and this is not necessarily the kind of book that i would usually go for so there's that. The thing that I did not like about this book is that I felt like we didn't get a lot of characterization. A lot of the story is reported in this vlog style narrative where the main character is talking to the reader and explaining why she does things and telling us the things that she does. So kind of like a vlog style narrative, which makes sense because you're reading a book by someone who is keeping up a YouTube channel and keeping up a media presence. So I get why that was told, but I felt like it needed a little bit more characterization. I felt like we got to know a lot about what April May was doing, but not really to get to know or care too much about the other characters, which I think is probably the way that the author intended because 
we have this young woman who's very self-centered and that is actually the criticism by her friends that she doesn't care about anybody except herself and so it felt like the author in not necessarily portraying the other characters as real people as multi-dimensional characters was also reinforcing that idea that well, April May doesn't care about them, so you shouldn't care too much about them either. And here's how I'm gonna make sure that you don't care about them, I'm gonna keep them a little bit flat. So I felt like that was a kind of a critique, except it might also be a little bit genius. I don't know. <laughs> One other tiny gripe that I have about the book is that a lot of the subplots were not resolved. And there were a lot of red herrings along the way, which turned out to not matter toward the story. But it wasn't until the end of the story that I realized that this is actually book one in a series. There is a series called An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. And so while I don't necessarily go for series, I'll probably be back for book two because I want to know what could be more remarkable than this. So I'll be back for book two and maybe you will be too because you might want to pick this up. <laughs> and so I read this copy from the New York Public Library. So this obviously is not the book that I'm going to be giving away. So stay tuned for the next book in my Close to Book series. Book two is another novel that I don't usually go for. And this is another book about a young white woman. I don't know why, but this protagonist is also 23 years old, except we've moved from New York City and now we've crossed the pond and we're in England and we're following Harriet Westaway or Hal Westaway, as she's referred to in most of the book. And yeah, most of the characters in here have at least two names. They have a name and they might have a nickname or an alternate persona, or they're just called something else. So there was, there's that, but we're not gonna talk too much about whether I like that or not. Harriet, AKA Hal, is a tarot card reader on the pier and she's been orphaned. And right now she's broke and desperate. So when she gets a letter in the mail from a solicitor saying that a, a old relative has died and left her an inheritance, even though she knows that it's a case of mistaken identity, she's just about desperate enough to see if she can go try to claim it. So off she goes to meet the Westaway family and try to convince them that she's actually their long lost relative. What happens next will utilize and test all her tarot card skills, but will also draw her into a web so tangled no psychic could predict. And yeah, Hal is no psychic. There was a lot that I liked about this book. I enjoyed the historical and literary references that Ruth Ware incorporated. I like the nursery rhyme inclusion. I like the birds, the magpies on the cover. I like the dark and stormy night, creepy gothic setting, complete with a weird housekeeper, AKA the butler, the butler did it and more family drama than you might expect going in. But for a lot of these books, including The Woman in Cabin 10, which is another Ruth Rear book that I read last year, I felt dissatisfied by the way the author brings the story to a resolution. I don't think that this book was mysterious or suspenseful enough to really, for me, fulfill the requirements for this genre. I think it's supposed to be mystery suspense except the back just says fiction and as fiction i get it as mystery slash suspense i felt like i figured out the mystery really early on and then everything that happened after that was not quite a red herring but some of it was just a little convoluted so at the end i was left feeling wanting and not necessarily because the book was so thrilling but because some of the plot points and subplots that were introduced were not necessarily resolved or resolved satisfactorily. Characters just disappeared. Characters that seemed like they were important, I felt like they were disposed of conveniently when they weren't necessary anymore, except they disappeared right before something that they needed to be around for happened. But I guess the biggest issue is that the ending didn't match the beginning because Ruth Ware spends so much time developing characters and investing in exploring backgrounds. Like there's an alternate perspective that we get from a diary that was written two decades prior. She introduces receipts and birth certificates from 20 years before to lay out the groundwork for the story. She revisited former relationships that had ended two decades prior to show the lead into the current circumstances. And then when it came time to put some of that attention to detail towards the end of the story, I felt like that was lacking. So my issue with the ending of the book is not a representation of the entire read 
and for me that's where I felt dissatisfied at the end and so ultimately that was my issue with the book that I read 360 pages and still felt like I needed about five more pages at the end to resolve everything I rated this book three out of five stars because I really enjoyed the attention that the author gave to multi-generational family conflicts which is a topic that I really enjoy reading about and there were a lot of literary and historic references that I enjoyed seeing incorporated in a book of this genre. I also liked reading the case of the mistaken identity. I felt like some of the family drama was not resolved completely and I get it that family dramas are never actually resolved completely in real life but I felt like in a novel where everything is in the author's control that some of those things should have been resolved. And so yeah I read this one also from the New York Public Library so ultimately you know this is not the book that I'm going to be giving away either. Which means that the final book we're going to talk about today is the book that I enjoyed the most of these three. And the book that I want to share with you guys, I'm going to be telling you about a giveaway. And that is Pretty in Punxsutawney by Laurie Boyle Brompton. I got an advanced reader copy of this one from Blink YA Publishers. I got this through a book tour from TLC Book Tours. And I love this book. It is YA fiction. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know that I am not a huge YA fan, but I love this book. I love this book. Pretty in Punxsutawney. The title is probably going to ring two bells for you. If you're a fan of movies from the 80s and 90s, then you might remember Pretty in Pink, which starred Molly Ringwald, which is a John Hughes movie. And you might remember Groundhog Day, which is set in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, which is the site of the Groundhog Day annual festivities let's call it that so from the synopsis i knew that pretty in punxsutawney was going to be a little bit of a mashup between those two movies but from a more literary perspective in character is andy she's a high school senior her mother is a big fan of these 80s and 90s movies and so andy was named after the main character in pretty in pink and the movies play a really pivotal role in the story because her mother uses these movies to teach Andy about life. Andy becomes this movie fan and so she's incorporating a lot of these movie situations and movie resolutions into solving her own issues. Remember Andy's mom is a fan of movies, not just Pretty in Pink, which means that there are several movies that have these very different resolutions and she's kind of telling Andy about all these different scenarios that she could introduce and incorporate into her life. So the fact that the novel is set in Punxsutawney brings us now to the Groundhog Day situation which I'm not going to tell you too much more about the book except to say that this is the kind of book that I would want to recommend to young girls who think that the most pressing issue in their life is how to impress the cute boy from algebra. Andy in here is probably a lot like other girls who think that they have to kind of dumb themselves down in order for boys to like them and in here she gets a boost of confidence, she gets a reminder that it's okay to be self-assured, to be confident in her intelligence knowing that the person or persons who need to know will eventually notice her intelligence, will eventually notice her smarts, and they will appreciate her for who she is, not for what she isn't. And I love the message in this book. It's also a huge trip down memory lane if you're a fan of movies from the 80s and 90s again. So I love the way the author incorporated a lot of those movie elements in this book, but also kept it very light. The only question that I have about this book is how relevant it would be to actual YA readers. If you're a 16 or 17 year old teenager, I don't know how likely it is that you've watched and really love these movies. And of course, you don't have to have read the movies to enjoy this book, but I felt like I love this book because of my pre-existing love and appreciation for those movies. So there's that. But I love this book. I got this advanced reader copy from the publishers and they graciously allowed me to give away a hardcover copy of this book to one of you guys. I'm announcing the giveaway here on my YouTube channel. It's also on my blog, runright.net. And I'm also gonna be sharing it on social media. And if you'd like to be entered to win, Comment down below your favorite scene from any of the movies, Groundhog Day, Pretty in Pink, 16 Candles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, or Beetlejuice. Five movies, you can tell me your favorite character or your favorite scene from any of those movies. Or if you're not a huge fan of movies or not a huge fan of 80s slash 90s movies, leave a comment down below that says, I like books, not movies, or something like that. So leave a comment down below and I'll enter you to win. 
You can also enter on my blog or on my social media, whichever place you enter. So if you enter on my blog, as well as on my YouTube channel, as well as on my social media, then you'll get three entries instead of just one. So that's the giveaway for Pretty in Punxsutawney by Laurie Boyle Grompton. I'm gonna be drawing these on February 2nd, which is Groundhog Day, of course. So on Groundhog Day, I will draw a winner and announce it here on my youtube channel maybe the day after that or on my social media or my blog or i guess in all three places i'll let you guys know if you've won a copy so this book was great there's one more thing that i really enjoyed about this book which i didn't talk about earlier is the way the author debunked a lot of ya tropes like she mentioned some of them and then talked about why they weren't going to be relevant in this book i really like that because you know i don't read a lot of ya and the fact that she mentioned and explained them and then explained why they didn't work here, I love that. But she also plays to something that I usually nitpick from books that feature teenage characters is always the absence of their parents. And if their parents are around, like they're very permissive and indulgent parents. But in this one, she showed the effect of good parenting. The character had a really good relationship with her mother. And even though her mother probably irritated her sometimes with the things that she did, it showed what could happen. It showed what a book could be when you had a main character who was a teenager as well as a cool mom who wasn't just trying to be her daughter's friend but was actually using the wisdom of her experiences to make her daughter's life better. And yeah, I really enjoyed a lot about this book. Recommend it highly. And so even if you enter the giveaway, I also recommend that you purchase a copy of this book, maybe not for yourself, but for a teenager, a teenage YA reader who you think would enjoy a story like this. And so yeah, I read Pretty in Punxsutawney, I read The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware, and An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by John Green. No, not John Green. And An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Yeah, these are three books that I finished reading recently. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of them. And of course, also comment down below with this comment that you need to write in order to enter the giveaway so we'll talk in the comments thanks for watching give me a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe if you haven't already there are a few of you who are brand new to the channel so i just want to say welcome thank you so much for being here glad you stuck around for this video there are going to be more new and exciting things happening here on the channel very soon so i hope you'll stick around for that so we'll talk in the comments until next time happy reading bye